say for the sake of argument, you're a white dude. You are posing for a picture that you want to put in your yearbook for medical school, or let's just say, you know, you want to show uh, uh, some sort of team spirit at a basketball game, or you're going to a Halloween party. And before you can even think about it, something deep in your psyche is reaching for the brown makeup in order to put on something called blackface. Now, I know this might surprise you guys, but putting on blackface might just be a racism. So today we're going to talk about blackface, uh, this thing that it seems like we just can't get white people to stop doing. And I'm going to be number 853 telling you don't do it. And there are very, very, very good reasons why it's not just insensitive. It is extremely offensive and going into a long and detailed and bloody history of violence, oppression, and just, just don't. Please. So high school teenager, uh, college student or governor of Virginia, you might be thinking, what's the big deal about wearing blackface? Why can't you be more grown facts, feelings triggered libs? Well, I mean, there's the surface level that you are painting yourself up to look like a person of color in a sort of exaggerated fashion. Uh, that should be instantly a sign that you're doing a racism. But let's dig a little deeper and know that there might be some history behind the symbology of the stuff you're about to paint on your face for, uh, what are those like teenagers who harassed a Native American a few weeks ago do it for? Like a basketball game? Literally, as I'm recording this video, I'm finding out that the Attorney General of Virginia also dressed in blackface. This is, wow. <laughs> okay, so the origins of blackface are a little bit murky. Some think that it goes all the way back to the 15th century, even pre-Columbian uh, times, where there was these sort of depictions of people from West Africa as a sort of uh, weird exoticism in Portugal, for example, where they would capture uh, black people, take them to Portugal and kind of parade them around as some sort of carnival act. But let's be honest, when it comes to blackface, there is nobody who does it worse than the Americans. Except maybe the Dutch. Seriously. Like, I've said this before, and I know that the Dutch people really hate when I do it, but stop it with the Black Peter thing. It's not cool. It's not even close to cool. The racial stereotypes in America, uh, you could probably imagine are not great. And the history of blackface goes back to these things called minstrel shows in the early 19th century. They were traveling comedy acts in which people would try to dress and do silly things in order to get a laugh. So of course, somehow dressing as a dopey black person was part of the gag. It spread a lot of stereotypes about black people at the time, more or less reinforcing the white supremacy of the time by uh, enforcing that, yes, these people are, they're dumb, they're simple, all those things. But on top of that, it also tried to normalize the act of slavery. Slavery was, without question, one of the most horrific and brutal things that we have done to other humans. And there was a lot of cognitive dissonance in the South and in the United States over their tolerance of slavery as a method of economic means. In order to justify it, they went to all sorts of insane lengths. You can look in one of my videos on scientific racism to see that there were medical textbooks that said that, oh, well, slaves who tried to escape this misery were, of course, just uh, suffering from mental illness or that black people suffer less pain than white people. And therefore, the whipping and stuff isn't that bad. Which, by the way, is a stereotype that carries down to today and the pain management of black people in modern day. Awesome. But blackface did another thing in that sort of standpoint. It reinforced white supremacy, as I said earlier, but also it played into other things that white society at the time needed to be true in order to uh, feel comfortable with what they were doing. The number one thing that showed up in these minstrel shows, but also shows up in a lot of writings about black people in this period, is that they were somehow happy to be doing this slave work. For example, a lot of plantation owners would have diaries where they would write about how, well, they're singing in the field, you know, doing those work songs, which means they must be happy. If they weren't happy, they wouldn't be singing. 
which, you know, such a solid argument there, buddy. You must work for Turning Point USA or something. Another example would be these minstrel shows where they showed that the black slave was not only incompetent at taking care of themselves, but were also just silly people happy to be servile and weak towards their white masters. Uh, yeah, minstrel shows were grotesque and disgusting. So when slavery ended, these shows did not, and they were successful and still pretty popular. Actually, they even got exported around the world and still continue to spread racist stereotypes and propagate the inferiority of black people in a white supremacist society. Very often, if you wanted to depict a black character in theater and you were a segregated theater that wouldn't hire people of color, not to mention the character you'd be betraying them as would be some sort of horrible stereotype, they would just hire white actors and put them in blackface. Through this distorted lens of blackface, they would also use it to uh, appropriate and assimilate black culture into white culture. Uh, the most obvious form of cultural appropriation you can think of, taking the art forms, the music, the art of black people and selling it to white people and in doing so also portraying the black person in that as this grotesquely racist stereotype. You could just imagine why that legacy might just not settle well with people. We think of things like slavery and uh, segregation as something in the far past and we don't have to worry about it anymore, but really uh, segregation is still well within living memory and not too far away was slavery. For example, Morgan Freeman, the Hollywood actor, uh, his great-grandmother was born in slavery. So this isn't that far away, people. And some of the most famous works of American cinema have blackface in them. Uh, the big examples would probably be the extremely sensitive and definitely worth emulating movie Birth of a Nation and uh, Al Jolson's portrayal uh, in blackface in a movie called The Jazz Singer, which is kind of more famous because it was the first um, talkie, the first movie where they synced up the voices with the picture and such. So, um, yeah, no walking that one back. By the way, uh, I was being sarcastic about the Birth of a Nation thing. Birth of a Nation is one of the most racist films ever made. The fact that it was popular, the fact Wilson actually showed it in the White House, a screening, uh, is despicable. It also was influential in spreading the Lost Cause myth, which was that whole concept that the South was somehow justified in its Civil War breakoff, and that somehow the Civil War wasn't about slavery. Not to mention the film glamorized the Ku Klux Klan. Seriously, there's a lot to go into with blackface and I'm actually starting to think it should be like a full step back video. Uh, this is just a primer as to why white people shouldn't dress in blackface, but uh, as I was doing the research for this video, I came up across all sorts of depictions and really interesting things to break down. So uh, maybe we should make that this summer? Tell me in the comments if you want me to make that this summer. Anyways, in more recent times, we've stopped using blackface because of its very obvious racist nature and its connection to uh, some of the darker and more horrific and oppressive parts of American history. So you'd think it'd be over, right? 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 You'd think that, right? But no, every Halloween, some celebrity dresses in blackface or, you know, some video comes out uh, that some like group of teenagers dressed in blackface to a basketball game or, you know, the governor of Virginia dressed in blackface next to some guy in a KKK robe for his uh, yearbook in medical school in the mid 80s. <sighs> So this is a practice that has its roots in literally one of the worst things that America has ever done. It also further spreads stereotypes that the people who have experienced all of this, you know, are somehow inferior people. And that, that's not good. Don't do that. And I'm starting to learn like by looking at like social media posts that the people who dress in blackface use and it's like, oh my God, this is so racist, LOL. And it's like, is there really people who think this way? And I guess like the answer's yes. I'm just surprised that something so, what you'd think would be so simple would be made complex. And the fact that 
people are uh, pushing back and having a kind of reaction to this. And it, I, I, listen, this is like the fourth take I've taken of this conclusion. I don't want to minimize the horribleness of it. I'm not trying to be glib or anything like that. This is an extremely disrespectful practice. And if you have any ounce of respect for African-American people, you would not dress in blackface. I think most people realize that. I just think that a lot of the people who do it uh, either are ignorant of the deep and very horrific roots of what's going on here and think that it's uh, something more benign than it is. It isn't. Uh, but on top of that, it speaks to the racism that is still very strong in the United States. And anybody who denies that, a uh, bit deluded. It was more of a thing people used to say in 2008, but uh, I don't think anyone denies that racism is uh, still very, very strong. So TLDR, don't do a blackface, please. It's very racist. It perpetuates horrible stereotypes about black people and has a legacy of hatred and bigotry that goes back to like the 19th century. So please don't add to it. Like this is like step one stuff. Sorry for being a little bit more sarcastic this week. I tried to be more sincere about this video, but then the second the camera turned on, I got extremely uh, grumpy and snarky. So uh, hopefully that's fun. Hopefully when I go through this mess of uh, footage, you guys find something neat. If you want to continue having content like this one, but hopefully the more impressive documentaries I put together, you can subscribe. And uh, I haven't said this in a while, but honestly, like the difference between me being able to make step back videos and not make step back videos like is really highly dependent upon how well I do on patreon.com slash step back history. So the people who are patrons, people whose names are probably going by right now, they are literally making it possible for me to keep making videos. And if it weren't for them, then it would not be happening. And you know, if you guys want to help out, it definitely helps with the rent paying and the food eating and such.